Hey guys, it's Christy. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm participating in the Fall Wreath Challenge being hosted by Aurelis from My Happy Home and Yanni from Deco Easy. They have asked us to put together a fall wreath and they only had one requirement, which was we had to include a thrifted item. When they put out this challenge, I thought that would be something fun to do and participate in, but I wanted to think outside of the box on this one. So I was thinking, what could I do that would not be your traditional wreath? You know, no flowers, things like that. What could I do that would be totally different? I started scouring Pinterest and I finally found an idea that I knew would be perfect. It was exactly the type of thing I was looking for it was a little bit different out of the box and I could make it totally my style exactly like I wanted and hopefully meet the requirements that they asked us to for the challenge so that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today if you're interested in seeing what I came up with stay tuned when you're done watching this video please head on over to Aurelis and Yanni's channels I'll leave the links in the description below for both deco easy and my happy home head on over there check out their channels and then also make sure you check out the playlist to see everybody else's fall race if you like this video make Make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed what are you waiting for hit that subscribe button and join our community we'd love to have you join us. I picked up the letters to spell the word fall from Michaels I also picked up some craft paper and I stuck with the neutral colors that I've been using if you saw my haul video from Pier 1 you'll notice that most of the things that I bought for fall have been neutral so I decided to stick with the same type of neutral tones my first step was to decide which craft paper I wanted to use with which letter, so I just played with them for a minute to figure that out. Then it was time to go ahead and start tracing my letters on the paper. So you want to take the paper and turn over the paper and the letter. Make sure you turn the letter over also, so that way it'll match up correctly when you're done. For the F, I decided that I was going to try to have it overlap the side. That's what I was thinking at first, so that's what I did with the F. I ended up not tracing enough outside of the lines. I traced a little bit outside of the F. If you want it to overlap completely, you want to trace about a half an inch, and I didn't do quite that much. I ended up overlapping what I had but I didn't really like the way that one turned out it didn't match all the way completely that was a lesson learned it was difficult to do more so than I thought it would be just more trouble than I really wanted to spend on it so for the rest of the letters I decided that I was going to stick with just tracing it exactly over the top so as you can see when we get to the A that is what I did I traced it exactly to fit on top. If I had thought about this before and realized I would have spray painted all of the letters gold, I would have done the sides and the back side of the letters, painted them in gold or some other coordinating color. Um, that way they would have a more finished look. For the Mod Podge, my little trick to help keep the bubbles out is to use a little piece of saran wrap and that helps you to be able to manipulate the paper and the bubbles without getting your hands all sticky. The next step was to cut out the ribbon and you just wanna make sure that you're cutting the ribbons at different lengths because I wanted the letters to stagger with the F being the highest letter and L being the lowest letter. So I just measured and cut. And when you measure, make sure that you're giving yourself some slack on both sides, quite a bit of slack actually, to be able to tie around the letters. The last thing I needed to do was embellish and I decided to use these pairs that I found at Goodwill for $3.99. I tied one pair onto the A and I tied one pair onto the L. For the final touch, I just had to hang it. Now, I happened to have this rod iron on my door which made it the perfect place to be able to tie on my letters. If you don't have that, you can always use command hooks 
and just turn them upside down so they will hold the letters. If you don't want the command hooks to show on the outside of the door, you can always put them on the inside of the door. Just turn them upside down and then just let the ribbon overlap your door. So if you have a more standard door, that would work perfectly for you. Like I said, it's a little bit out of the box, but I am loving it. I love that I could totally customize it to how I wanted it to be, and it works perfectly on my door. I would love to know what you think about it. Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to go check out Yanni and Aurelis' channels, and then also the playlist. Links are in the description, so check those out. And if you're not subscribed, I'd love to have you join us, so please hit that subscribe button, and also turn on your notifications so you'll never miss a video. Thanks for watching guys, bye.